What is a dangerous blood sugar level? Welcome to Diabetic 365. Today we're talking about blood sugar and when it becomes dangerous. Your blood sugar levels can swing too high, a condition called hyperglycemia, or too low, which is called hypoglycemia. Both extremes are risky for people with diabetes. The severity of these swings depends on many factors, including your specific type of diabetes, medications, age, and how long your blood sugar stays out of range. Emergencies happen when blood sugar levels remain abnormal for a long time. You might notice symptoms like shakiness or confusion when your blood sugar is low. If it's too high, you might experience extreme thirst or hunger. It's crucial to remember that not everyone has symptoms, so knowing your numbers is key. Blood sugar levels can swing too high, hyperglycemia, or too low, hypoglycemia. Both extremes are risky for people with diabetes. How bad it gets depends on many things. This includes your type of diabetes, medicines, age, how long your blood sugar is off, and if you notice symptoms. Emergencies happen when blood sugar stays abnormal for a long time. You might feel symptoms like sweating, shakiness, or confusion when blood sugar is low. For high blood sugar, symptoms include weight loss, extreme hunger, or fruity breath. But remember, not everyone has symptoms. Sometimes these extreme levels mean a trip to the hospital. If not treated fast, they can cause serious problems, even death. Managing diabetes relies on you, so it's super important to know the dangers of very low and very high blood sugar. Learn how to spot them and what to do. This guide will explain when high and low blood sugars are dangerous. We'll tell you what to do right away, what causes these extremes, and when to go to the hospital. If you have diabetes and have felt low blood sugar, you know how awful it feels. It can be scary when it hits suddenly. Seeing someone else with low blood sugar can also be frightening. To feel less scared, learn the signs and what to do. Symptoms of low blood sugar vary for everyone, but common ones include shakiness, feeling annoyed or easily upset, confusion or anxiety, more hunger than usual, fast heartbeat, sweating, chills, clammy skin, feeling lightheaded or dizzy, nausea, pale skin, feeling sleepy, feeling weak or tired, blurry vision, tingling lips, tongue or cheeks, headaches, clumsiness, or problems with coordination, nightmares, or crying out in sleep. Seizures. The American Diabetes Association, ADA, breaks down low blood sugar into levels. Level 1. Hypoglycemia. Your blood sugar is below 70 mg per deciliter, but still 54 mg per deciliter or higher. Level 2. Hypoglycemia. Your blood sugar is below 54 mg per deciliter. At this level, your brain isn't getting enough sugar. This causes symptoms like confusion. You need to act immediately to fix this. If your blood sugar is this low, but you don't feel symptoms, you might have hypoglycemia unawareness. Talk to your doctor to prevent this from happening again. Level 3. Hypoglycemia. This is severe low blood sugar. Your mental or physical state is so affected that you need help from another person to recover. You can't treat yourself. This type is less common and often affects people with type 1 diabetes who use insulin. If not treated fast, it can lead to seizures, passing out, coma, or even death. High blood sugar can happen sometimes without causing harm, but if your blood sugar stays high for a long time, it can damage your body. This damage can affect small blood vessels, like in your eyes or kidneys, and large ones, like in your heart. Your blood sugar targets are unique to you. They depend on your age, type of diabetes, how long you've had it, and other health issues. Generally, adults with diabetes aim for a fasting blood sugar of 80 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. After meals, one to two hours, it's usually less than 180 milligrams per deciliter. Anything higher is technically high, but always discuss your specific targets with your doctor. Worry if your blood sugars are repeatedly higher than your normal range or if you have symptoms when they are high. If you regularly see high numbers and don't know why, your treatment plan might need a change. 
Contact your diabetes care team or doctor for help. High blood sugar becomes dangerous if you have ketones in your body. This is more common in type 1 diabetes. It can also happen in type 2 diabetes if you use insulin or certain medications, SGLT2 inhibitors. High blood sugar can also be dangerous if you have undiagnosed diabetes and experience symptoms. Type 2 diabetes often develops slowly. You might have prediabetes or undiagnosed diabetes without knowing it. Over time, these high levels can lead to a diabetes diagnosis or cause serious complications. Common symptoms of high blood sugar include extreme thirst, peeing a lot, increased hunger, blurry vision, feeling very tired, numbness, or tingling in hands and feet. Very high blood sugar levels can lead to medical emergencies. Diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA. This happens when your body doesn't have enough insulin and can't use sugar for fuel. Instead, it burns fat, making ketones. Ketones make your blood acidic, which is very dangerous. DKA needs immediate medical care. It can damage cells and lead to coma or death. DKA usually develops slowly, starting with intense thirst and frequent urination. If not treated, severe symptoms can appear fast. Fast, deep breathing, stomach pain, nausea, vomiting, dry skin and mouth, flushed face. Fruity smelling breath, headache, muscle aches and stiffness, extreme tiredness, hyperglycemic, hyperosmolar, non-ketotic syndrome, HHNS or HHNKC. This is more common in people with type 2 diabetes, especially with an infection. Blood sugars can rise above 600 milligrams per deciliter. Other symptoms include increased thirst and urination early on, feeling weak, nausea, weight loss, dry mouth and tongue, fever seizures, confusion coma. When to check for ketones. When to check for ketones depends on your diabetes plan. Many experts suggest checking if your blood glucose is over 240 milligrams per deciliter. Others say over 300 milligrams per deciliter. If you use an insulin pump, check ketones if your blood sugar is over 300 milligrams per deciliter for no clear reason, or if it hasn't dropped two hours after an insulin correction dose. Low blood sugar can be treated quickly with fast-acting carbs. Think four ounces of juice, one tablespoon of sugar or honey, or glucose tablets dot gel. Check package for amounts. Use the rule of 1515. Take 15 to 20 grams of fast-acting carbs, wait 15 minutes and retest your blood sugar. If it's still below 70 milligrams per deciliter, repeat. Don't use carbs with fat, like chocolate, as they slow absorption. People with type 2 diabetes should avoid protein to treat lows, as it might increase insulin without raising blood sugar enough. Once your blood sugar is back to normal, eat a meal or snack with carbs and protein, e.g. barmy, apple with peanut butter, to prevent it from dropping again. Don't overeat to feel better. This can cause a rebound high. Treatment for children may need less carb. Ask your diabetes team for specific advice. In a severe low blood sugar event, you might not be able to treat yourself. Someone else will need to give you glucagon. Glucagon releases stored sugar from your liver. Parents, school staff, and caregivers should know how to use it, especially for children and older adults prone to lows. How you treat high blood sugar depends on how high it is, why it's high, and if you have ketones. If your blood sugar is high after a meal because of a miscount, you might take extra insulin to correct it. However, if your blood sugar is very high, you feel sick and have ketones, call your health care team immediately for advice. Treatment plans are always personalized. Risks of untreated, dangerous blood sugar levels. Emergencies like very low blood sugar or DKA can lead to coma and death. These need immediate treatment. Frequent low blood sugar episodes, especially in children, can affect thinking. Older adults may not feel their lows, hypoglycemia unawareness. When blood sugars are chronically high, they greatly increase the risk of diabetes complications. Studies show that keeping blood sugar in a healthy range significantly reduces problems with eyes, nerves, and kidneys. Work with your diabetes care team. Keep your blood sugars stable and prevent big swings. Causes vary by diabetes type and medications.
Low blood sugar can happen from mistiming medications, taking medicine after a meal, or too much medicine. Skipping meals. For children with type 1, taking insulin for food they didn't eat. Drinking alcohol, physical activity. Dangerously high blood sugar is linked to skipping medications, like insulin, insulin pump problems, not taking medicines as prescribed. Illness at the hospital. Regulating blood sugar levels. If you're hospitalized for dangerous blood sugar, a diabetes expert should be part of your care. For high blood sugar, like DKA, treatment usually involves fluids, insulin, and replacing electrolytes. Blood sugar levels can always fluctuate. Prevention means paying close attention. Preventing low blood sugar involves careful blood glucose monitoring, smart food choices, adjusting insulin, and understanding what causes lows, like fasting for tests, skipped meals, or exercise. Many people benefit from a continuous glucose monitor, CGM. This device alerts you if your blood sugar is going too high or too low. Preventing high blood sugar also includes accurate blood sugar monitoring, following a diabetes-friendly meal plan, regular exercise, enough sleep, taking medicines as prescribed, and managing stress. Check blood sugar often, especially before driving, using machinery, or exercising. Always have fast-acting carbs and snacks ready at home, work in your car, or in your bag. Work with your diabetes team to create a personal treatment plan. It should fit your health goals, lifestyle, and culture. If you're not taking your medicines because you don't know how, they're too expensive, or they make you feel bad, tell your doctor. They can help you find a better option. Stopping medicine on your own can be dangerous. The ADA calls blood glucose monitoring a key part of effective therapy for those who use insulin. Checking your blood sugar at home helps you see what causes highs and lows. If you use a CGM, you should also have a regular blood glucose meter. Use it to confirm very high or very low readings from your CGM. Many things affect blood sugar, diet, exercise, medicine, illness, stress, sleep, and hormones. Any change in these can cause swings. So understand your target numbers and how to check them, whether with a traditional meter or a CGM. Extremely low and high blood sugars are immediate dangers. You must act fast. If you're ever unsure what to do, contact your diabetes care team or a certified diabetes care and education specialist for help.